Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by my co-host, Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Thanks for bringing the OG opening back. It's nice. I just didn't want to hear you complain. I was tired of it. Yes, I understand. If something's working, why would you go away from it? But, you know, there's nothing wrong with switching things up every mm-hmm. once in a while. So I won't be upset. Corner of your Air Force is coming in the frame, by the way. I know. So needs to be part of every episode. Do you want me to move it? Not if it needs to be part of every episode. I guess it's fine. So now I'm just going to cut to your your solo shot the entire episode. I moved them. And I'm just I'm just Oh. Glad. It's like they're not in the frame. So what's going on? Just busy and tired. Yeah, same here. Tired and busy. It's uh Monday, August 15th. Mhm. So I would be remiss if I didn't give our most loyal Vibe Tribe member, happy birthday shout out to my uh, big little brother, Alan. So we on Rush Vibes acknowledge your birthday, Young King. That was your cue to drink. It's because you said your little wrestling term. That's why I chose not to. I don't forget he did come pick your child up when we were He did in the hospital. I appreciate that. Yeah, so you should have you should have acknowledged him. But that's okay. You want to tell people the uh about the shirt I'm wearing? Because I forgot. It's by a company called Black Smart and Yeah, but who who are the people who run it? Two who black own it? people. This was like three months ago. Yeah, but you know who it is. I haven't I don't worn know this one. Personally. Oh, I thought it was the people from the season of uh, mm-hmm. Married at First Sight. They were oh. at the event. That was just a different oh. event. Oh, okay. So I thought it was their shirt, Mm-mm. their like clothing line. I don't think I bought it. Because, you know, that's the thing. When you become popular, you drop a clothing line. That's true. Yeah. You got to do that. Except, well, I guess maybe we're not popular. That's why we don't have a clothing line. I just don't know what yet. to do. And I, I'm at capacity right now. So that's why I haven't done it. Yeah. So, yes, so this is a, I'm back to my uh, black owned direct to consumer small brand supporting. So um, I don't know who the brand is because I thought it was somebody else and obviously it's not. So, um, yeah, I went to an event and they had a bunch of vendors, black vendors, different T-shirts, candles. I bought that candle. Yeah, I bought that candle from there. Um, the earrings I'm wearing, she was there. Um, and I only bought you that shirt because I remembered that you had capitalized the B in the email and the old boy called it out. So I figured you'd appreciate it. In the email? To your old CEO. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. So I saw it. I got it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Um, what else? What's going on? It's Monday. It is Monday. Crazy Monday. We barely survived kind of Monday. But we made it by the grace. By the grace. But God. Um, yeah. I think I said, I think I said this on an episode that, uh, the next job I have <laughs> wouldn't be, I wouldn't have dark reports. I think I said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down on that. So maybe I'll just like go back to trade school and be a plumber. Remember that time we had, uh, we had our sink messed up? Our, our spout, uh, not, mm-hmm. what's it called? The uh, faucet? Faucet. Yeah. And we got somebody out here like same day and dude did like 
20 minutes of work and charge us like 600 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need that kind of leverage. I need work, that kind of leverage in my life. He worked for a company, so he probably didn't see all of that. Somebody made 600. Mm-hmm. That part. That's I mean, he made he made a good bit for the amount of time he's been working. Mm-hmm. And that's no no shade. Shout out to him and his and his trade. Um yeah, I might need to be a plumber or a welder. Yeah. I've heard elevator engineers make good money. Yeah. I might I might have to go back to school. Trade school. Night school. Um but yeah. It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. Very much so. I get it. Yeah. Um, so this is, like I said, Monday. Uh, we're recording because you got some some moves to make. So we too many moves to at, make. at the risk of not having a episode drop on Wednesday. Although I had just said, why don't we just drop the episode we didn't release that we recorded before we went to um, Dominican Republic? But Jessica was trying to give me. A guilt trip saying that we haven't been as serious this year and i don't know if that's necessarily the case i just think we have another kid and that one kid makes a big difference Mm -hmm. it does so it doesn't negate the fact that we've been kind of lax no it just explains it Mm -hmm. doesn't negate it it explains it which means it's justified but I've also done some things to kind of help cut down on on time. So, like, we usually shoot our episodes in 4K. We shot it all last year in 4K. I've since switched to 1080p, which is easier, smaller files, um, easier to edit. So it means faster. And then YouTube processes 1080p a lot faster. Mm-hmm. So whereas <clears throat> any of our hour-plus long episodes, I would have to upload probably like two days before, so like Monday night. And have to have it uploaded in order for the full 4K to be processed by Wednesday. Today, I just put it up like the night before. It's good to go in the morning. So that helps. Mm. Less taxing on the camera so they don't overheat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this, this is a video podcast. I don't know that it necessarily needs to be in 4K. It's nice. It looks better. You can tell. I can tell. But, you know, it's probably overkill. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad I realized that. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just tired. Like just, and I feel like the work that I did last year, no disrespect, (laughs) wasn't very taxing. Uh, So I was able to afford to like stay up late and edit and get them up. Cause we did a lot of Tuesday night recordings for, um, for Wednesday. So now I was a lot more involved in managing more people. Um, and I got into the field last year was COVID. So nobody was really going anywhere. So that all kind of adds up too. And then, um, yeah, the kids like something about them, like individually or just two of them, they're fine. But when like all three of them are like mm-hmm. in the same vicinity, they're just a lot. Cause I, yeah. I was running around with two of them, the two small ones today. Fine. I mean, we were, I had them in and out of Perfect. places and I mean, it was, it was exhausting. I even went, I took them to my work storage unit and we were in there like getting supplies for people it worked i was tired i had to hold sonoma and she's she's thick she's got some girth to her but made she's it a work. Little fatty yeah made it work but i'm sure even though solace is technically the easiest kid when you ha- when it's three it's a lot yeah no yeah, it is but i think at least i can say i know a couple of days ago i thought about it and i was like I think we're finally, at least myself, I can speak for myself, at a point where I am okay with three kids. Like, it's no longer overwhelming. And I think it's because it's our, it's officially our normal. I think it took Sonoma becoming more mobile and having to, like, actually keep up with her. And then us having to learn to work around that for me to be like, okay, like, we're in it. Like, we got three kids. We need to, this is it. So I would say within the last couple of weeks, I've had that revelation where I'm just like, okay, we, I mean, this is just our reality now. And sometimes that's the thing with life where I've heard people say, like, I have a few friends who have had kids who, you know, have you know, either a mental development issue or just a health issue. And, you know, they say 
that's their normal. Like they don't know anything mm. else. So, you know, in and out of hospitals, all of these things. Yeah, we, to us, it seems like a lot, but that's because we, that's not our normal. Our normal are, by the grace of God, healthy children. But for people who, you know, either have multiple kids or have a kid with a developmental issue or health issue where, you know, maybe that's the first child they had, that's what they know. That's, that's you know, it is normal to be in a hospital room. It is normal to, you know, taking medications and all of that. So I think once it becomes and you accept that it's your normal, it's just kind of like, yeah, I got three kids. Like, and what? They're here. I yeah. Plan to have them, but they're here. So we gonna make it work. Yeah. Um, I feel like I took the three of them somewhere recently. And, um, I know anytime I, I take all three of the kids somewhere, you're always like, you're taking all of them? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to take all three of the kids. I got to do it sooner or later, mm -hmm. right? So you might as well. And we never go anywhere crazy. Like, we'll go to the grocery store mm -hmm. or um, I don't even know where else, probably just the grocery store. And, uh, you know, it's funny. You always get those get those looks like. Like all of those of yours. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, only you know, the one one adult to, to three kids and one is a baby. And people always ask, Oh, you need help with anything? Like I just like I'm just no, I'm just I'm just grabbing this, you know, aquafina out of the <laughs> out of the refrigerator. I'm good. I don't need you to get the water for me. I'm I'm straight. Um man, it's just interesting how people have a lot more um sympathy for you uh, when they see you alone with, with three kids. Maybe, especially as a dad, I don't know. Uh, especially from like a lot of the women who I who I come in contact with. Like I took <clears throat> Sovereign and I took our two youngest to uh, pick up wings the other night mm. when uh, the spot was running the special. And um, I parked the car right in front of the restaurant thinking I was just going to go in and grab them and come back home. So, uh, so no one so no was asleep. Savi was, was on her tablet. So I was like, hey, I'm going to run inside. I'm going to be right back. So I parked the car so she could see into the into the restaurant. Of course, they hadn't even like started on the order. <laughs> so once I realized, I was like, all right, let me, let me run back in or run back out to the car, bring the kids in. Um, and Tanoma was cool. She was chilling. And then Savi was just kind of, you know, bouncing around being, being a two-year-old. So when the food was ready to go get it, she was like, do you need some help? I'm just like, no, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, the, the bag has handles. Like I'm, I'm good. It was just interesting. Um, but it was cool. Like it wasn't, I wasn't offended or anything, but it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting how you get treated when you go out with kids and then you get all the smiles mm -hmm. from like all the soccer moms okay. and everything. <laughs> Cause you know, the girls are, they're, they're cute. Yeah. So. Savvy got a lot of grins today. Cause she, she, cool. She had her she princess. She was wearing a Tinkerbell costume. Yeah. So we were, we went to the, my eye doctor to get my, my prescription had come in. So we went to go pick those up and everybody was just like, she was like, look at my dress. I said, look at my dress. Uh, and then she was pointing at glass. Well, at, least she, she was, at least she didn't tell him to look at her butt. That, which, which she does tell her, me. her new thing now. Um, look at my butt. Um, but I mean, she was, she was cute. And then we went to Target and, you know, I'm holding Sonoma and I'm holding, you know, the cart cover for Sonoma to sit in and you know I'm holding Savi's hand and she, again she's bopping along and you know cars are driving by and I noticed like they're driving slow like older there was an older woman in, in the passenger seat of one car and she just had this like big smile on her face admiring Savi um and I know people some people were probably like why is this child out in a Tinkerbell <laughs> outfit and then I think there's like a camaraderie with yeah. some moms where they're like for me it's like pick your battles this isn't a battle she wanted to and i think it's cute like if she's fully clothed um she was cute she's two you get two years old you can run around in the tinkerbell i can't do that at 32 and you probably could i shouldn't do that at 32 probably look good too anyway um but some, yeah it's, it's it's interesting i know i get more if i'm I tend to go out with two at a time for some reason. It just kind of defaults that way. So it's either Solace and Sonoma or Savi and Sonoma. And I get a different kind of attention with Sonoma and Savi. I think because they're, you can tell they're both so close in age. Uh, whereas like the few times I've gone out with Solace and Sonoma, it's just kind of like, oh, you, you got an older kid and then a little baby. And 
part of me wants to be like, yeah, it's only two out of three. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's still work, but it's kind of nice to be at a place where I'm not fearful because I had anxiety about, about them for the longest time. Mm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize you, you were anxious about going was, out with. Even postpartum, like, I was very, very much so anxious about being left home alone with them. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, I know that. <laughs> Trust me. Um, there's a lot of stuff I, not a lot, but there are things that I would like to do, but I, I just don't ask because I figure you're not ready for that. For you weren't ready for that. Now I, I mean, I don't. I mean, this is breaking news to me that you finally accepted the fact that we have three kids. I mean, I've always accepted. Um, I mean, but you're accepting your ability. You're realizing your ability, our ability to raise, <coughs> have, and raise three kids. And sometimes by ourselves, individually. So, um, yeah, there'll be times like, oh, I think I could, like, no. Because <laughs> I would just have to be alone. And I'm like, no. I'm, but, you know, but you know, it's interesting, because I've been alone with the girls, all three of them, more than you have. But they act different with just you. How do you know you're not here? I just know. Kid, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, a, no, you're it's not. a kid thing. Kids, but you're not, you're kids not here. Behave, it, it's a fact. Kids behave well, differently. Of course, because fact. we have a different relationship yeah, but kids are just from what i've read um kids are just more comfortable doing your doing your research on the internet but kids are just more <laughs> comfortable essentially being reckless around their mothers their mothers are more accepting whereas typically like dads are not so right because we you know we lay the law though no you just still create an environment of comfort for your children no, i treat um, an environment of them behaving and following the rules anyway yeah so yeah they're just different but i mean honestly the last few times i've been home i was recently home alone with them last week they were they were good i got everybody into bed but i think you were working i had to work yeah, you yeah, were working wasn't, wasn't um i think you got home a little after nine but everyone we were all in bed like sonoma was asleep at eight i had the other two i had solace asleep savi just that was, like, yeah, that was the night she didn't want to sleep savi was just like I'm up and I was like, sis, I need to upload 43 profiles into a website. I don't have time for you to just be up. But they were, I mean, we ate dinner, we played, we danced around and it was fun. Like we had a good time. So they're good kids. Yeah. I got a, uh, I got a compliment for uh, Salas when we were going to uh, DR. Uh, I'm pre-check and you're not. So we got separated on the way. I was not. You were not correct. And, uh, she went with me. So we were, um, we were at the, at the line, we were putting stuff through the, the little scanner and, you know, she was just bouncing around. She hadn't been anywhere, I guess, since on a plane, since she was what, two? No, since Mexico. So three. So three. So three years, almost four. Um, and I had to be like, no, wait, like, stay here, stand here, like, stand still, <laughs> stop, stop moving, look ahead, wait for her to tell you to walk through. Um, and it's, it's weird how, like, when you're out and you're with your kids, because you're on high alert, right, because you're in the airport, so many people walking mm-hmm. around, you hear things of, like, trafficking, whatever, but mainly you just don't want to lose your kid. <laughs> so, um, there's a lot going on. And even though I'm pre-check, I'm still like, like I always forget. Like, oh, I still got to take my phone out. I got to take this out and take my headphones off. So I'm putting stuff into into my bag. And then there's this dude. This white dude. With like a really, you know, voice. So I don't know if he was or wasn't. But that was the vibe he gave. Which is fine. But it's just, I wasn't ready for all of that mm-hmm. to, to come upon me. Because I'm, again, I'm, you know, I'm kind of trying to stay focused and he's like oh my gosh is that your daughter and i was like yeah he was like she's so gorgeous <laughs> i was like i was like thank you i, I appreciate that and i walked through the line and, um and then i think he followed us and he asked her i can't remember what he asked her but she was uh but you know so i was, so I was actually really wasn't in that great of a mood because mm-hmm. of all the standing and waiting we had to do so she kind of gave him a, a lukewarm response and i was like all right say thank you and she's like thank you 
uh, we went on our way. So that's actually the first, and I, I bring that up, it's the first time I've actually got a compliment for her in a while. Usually it's, you know, she's kind of at the age where she's kind of phased out of the, oh, and it's usually just a smaller two. But, um, yeah, that was fun. It's like, she's so gorgeous. She is. And you, the braids. And you know, somebody means it when their eyes roll back yeah. in their, in their head before they, you know, when they give you the compliment, I was like, okay, bro, you really meant it. And you took, went out of his way to give me the compliment. So she... She, she must is, have been giving. She's so, a beautiful kid. The um, braids bring her face out. Like, it, they accent her. They mature her, but they just, like, I kind of like her. I really like her with braids, but then at the same time, I don't. Because I feel like since the braids have gone into her hair, she just looks, like, I have to accept, like, she's a second grader. She's going to be seven. She, like, in three years, she'll be double digits. Like, I'm just, she is growing at an exponential pace. It's the same, same pace as... Everybody else, no, day by day. No, but this is our kid, so it's faster. Yeah. Speaking of, I just pulled her tooth out from under her pillow. I thought she left it in the Ziploc bag, so I was looking for a Ziploc bag. Oh, she took it out? Yeah. So mm. I got it. And I would have four Hopefully teeth. she doesn't watch this episode. I would have four of her teeth, except the one time you played Tooth Fairy, you lost her tooth. I thought I found it. No, you never did. If you found it, you never gave it to me, so I only have three teeth. Which is weird that I'm just holding on to her teeth, but I have them. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Thanks. I should teach you not to just have me play, you know, have me play Tooth Fairy. All you need to do is retrieve a tooth and give it to me. That's it. What's in there? Like, ding, 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 ding. I still fumbled it. Dang. That's crazy. It's all good. Hopefully she doesn't ask for an inventory of all her teeth because I can't give her that. Oh, I'm up. I'll give her three. I hope she doesn't watch this episode and realize that the tooth fairy is not real. She's not gonna watch this episode. She might. She says she watches it. Oh, yeah, the podcast. How? Sometimes. Oh, on the TV. It's gotta be. She's usually the first one up on the weekends. Yeah, she's become so self sufficient now. It's kind of scary. No, she's not. Like this morning, it, she'll wait till I come down. And say, can I have some breakfast? This morning, she came down by herself. Like I heard her. No, she'll come downstairs, but then she'll she wait made, for somebody you know, to come down. She was make. She had her own. She waited for you to make her cereal I made her this morning. Cereal. Oh, yeah. I thought she did it. No. But the other morning, she and Savi came down and she made them breakfast. She made both of them cereal. Which means she's capable, but she'd be milking the fact that we'll do stuff for her. Of course. Let her do that. Terrace. It's our baby. They're all our baby. Allegedly. Um, Excuse me? Hmm. Alleged by who? I'm just saying allegedly. <laughs> it's was, it was a joke. Okay. You no. Know, anyway. You, know you had that fling that one time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. God, don't <laughs> I'm just say kidding. That. I'm just playing America. People really going to be like, which one's not there? And Yo. Start analyzing the kids. Um, speaking of kids, did you. Are we going to talk about kids this whole episode? I mean, we might as well to offspring, like 20, 20, offspring vibes. 23 minutes in. Um, did you read the Venus Williams? retirement i did not i saw it i heard like snippets of it i don't know why you th- like i'm not like you i don't have time to uh, well first of all because you came no, at me with judgment no and and i am and i'm coming back at you with more judgment so number one respect the fact that i'm not just sitting here with an abundance of time neither all right so don't I come at me don't no, no 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 don't come at me like i don't have time like you i don't have time either you, but you have time no i don't but you've read the article i just now read it before we came on so you had time and you did too i did not yes you did what did i do as soon as i put something you went to go poop didn't you I you could have read it while you were sitting down I, i'm sorry i don't sit in the bathroom for 45 minutes like you do the amount of time you were in there you could have read the you could have read the article i was focused <laughs> you, okay if you still got to Focus on only one thing when you went there. I just only want to focus on one thing. It's problematic. You should have read the and article. And I went to my computer. Yeah, for some stuff for somebody you don't even work with no more. But it was work related. Whatever. You have no, time. No. You, know, you be you be doing this whole damsel in distress thing sometimes, I'm not and it's, doing it's, dam- it's overkill. And I then have, you try to and then you try to come at me like I'm just sitting here like a bum, like I don't work. I didn't say you sit like, here like, like, like a bum. Like I don't bum? like I don't to parent like. I'm not the one who has to do all this stuff for the podcast and still find time to do. Well, there's a, a lot of work that I have to do late at night when you get upset at me because you think I just don't want to come to bed. I'm actually working. 
I didn't say you weren't. I know. So I had a lot of stuff to do. But why don't you so do don't sit stuff here. during the day? I do because I'm doing other stuff for work. First of all, you're going to lower your voice. It's not. You're not gonna it's let, not me. You're not going to let these people see the Ike no, Turner. That it's not, it's not me not working during the day. It's me working during the day and still having work left over at the end of the day. <laughs> because I'm the one who normally picks the kids up. I'm the okay. one who normally takes the kids to work to school. Okay. Yeah. So my day is confined. My day and, is confined. Right. But we're talking about me. My day is confined. <laughs> And I don't always have time to fit all my work inside that time. So I have to do it at the end of the day. I do too. I get it. Yes. That's I what I'm it. saying. We're both equally busy. But for some reason, you come at me in, the, in a way where it's because like, I don't. you have time to meme and, and do things. That's called efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> I've become efficient at firing off memes. Yes. And maybe you should take a little bit more time to step away for like, I take little micro breaks. Yes, I do do that. Two to five minutes every hour or so it makes getting through the work day with 15 direct report reports a lot more bearable but i still have a large workload usually every single day i have too many meetings to take micro breaks let me turn that camera off girl i do but i still need to listen anyways so what'd you see what what tidbits did you see of the serena retirement piece in vogue um i know that she is retiring because she is a woman and the burden of expanding her family falls on her and she can't do both uh that's this that's what i've gathered i'd listened to i was driving somewhere and got a snippet from um npr a segment on npr so um that's what i heard and i felt for her i understood i respect her um i think she and her sister, but specifically she, have done great things for tennis. I don't know that I would have had a value for tennis if there wasn't someone who looked like me playing the game. Uh, so I, it's to me, it's partially unfortunate. Like, you know, she kind of has to s sacrifice what she's greatest at. But who knows what that next chapter is going to be for her. Another baby, maybe she's going to pour into, what's her name, Octavia? What's her baby's name? It's something with an O, I think. Sure. Um, I could be wrong. But uh, going to pour into her, no, I think their last name is Ohanian or something, something like that. Um, whatever the baby's name is. But I think she might pour into her. She has, you know, an inkling or an interest in tennis. She might be able to nurture and mature that maybe she'll start some camps maybe she'll you know enrichment programs who knows you know she's but she's also married to a billionaire so maybe she'll just sit down like there's nothing wrong with that like i'm here for these you know successful black women who have married billionaires and they're like like eve did it so you know serena can do whatever she pleases she has given what she needs to give to the world she made a movie for her dad the man who played her dad slapped a dude in the Produ night he got in produced <clears throat> okay um will smith received an award for playing her father so king richard yeah he also slapped chris rock yeah we know we've we're, we're all living so, lest we forget we're living in 2022 Just we all make sure nobody all forgets. Know. so yeah see yeah i too uh gained an appreciation for tennis uh, because of the williams sisters i remember growing up um mom would watch uh because when at first it was venus who was balling and then uh serena kind of came up behind her and in terms of individual competition i know they they play doubles a lot um and they were kind of in that era with them and tiger and and whatnot taking over the 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 historically not non-black uh sports mm -hmm. so we would watch the the big and especially in the summertime you know the basketball basketball's over in between when, when football's gonna really start back up so yeah we would watch and um learned what i know about tennis which is still very very small about the game uh, by watching the williams sisters and listening to the commentators and stuff so i i owe like you, my my whole appreciation for the sport to them because if it weren't for them, I probably wouldn't have watched. Um, it's 
weird. You said not weird. Interesting. It stuck out in your uh, synopsis of of what you know or recap of what you know, and that you said she had to step away because she's a woman. And you said, of course. Um. Why? Why? Why is it in a like a a matter of fact thing? Like why is it a given that um, a co billionaire, um, one of the greatest athletes of, of all time, of course, has to sacrifice their career, albeit in, in its later stages, uh, because of other oh, family? Like, why is it? Why? Why is that the mentality? toward it that's just the social structure the biological structure of our society you know just, uh, granted you know she if i don't know if she plans on having more children if she wants uh, i think i've heard that they've it's a conversation that they've had um or a desire of them as a couple i don't know them personally so it's not like they told me but um granted yeah they could hire a surrogate but the it doesn't, it to, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter how much the work of a family is divvied up between male and female. The brunt of the burden to me falls always will always fall on the woman um, physically because if you choose to be pregnant, carry that child to term. That's your body that has to, you know, incubate and hold and you have to adapt to preparing to bring someone into the world. You have to go to the physical labor of doing it. You know, you have to deal with, you know, are you nursing? Are you not nursing? So trying to nurse yourself back to health while also being presented with this tiny human who doesn't know what's going on and doesn't care. So yeah of course it's a sacrifice she has to make like she you know if it was if vena if serena excuse me was you know sereno and was married to a woman and wanted to like she would go i mean look at tom brady and giselle for example like tom brady has been playing football for like 40 years now um giselle was a fashion model giselle gave up her career for the most part, to expand their family, to be, you know, to be able to support him, to have children. And, you know, he, he even said, like, when he, re like, semi-retired for, like, a week and a half, um, that he was retiring in part to, you know, give her the opportunity to catch up for lost time. And then he ended up, like, unretiring. So it was, like, undo. But he recognized it. People recognize it. It's just a defaulted burden on women. Even if she hypothetically hired a surrogate, that's still time she would have to take to, you know, she would have to go through hormones to, for the egg retrieval and all of that for it to go into someone, to be extracted, to go into someone. And then once that baby's born, that nurturing period of, you know, she would have to give up playing the, the game to nurture her baby. I think about like basketball players have babies all the time. And like I, I personally have never heard of a basketball player taking paternity leave. Um, they just, you know, I think there was one guy, I can't remember who during the season, I remember like the announcer saying like his wife was in labor or had just given birth like a couple days before and like he was back on the court. A woman doesn't can't do that. So certain things are, you know, they're unfortunate, but they're factual. Didn't your friend like go sit on on the on a TV show? She did, and I was I wasn't upset with her. Yeah, you were. But See, I was like, See, you need to rest. If you know the number of times I've told that woman to rest, but that she's just, you know, when you have to do something as a woman, you'll get it done. She'll get it done. She got it done. Mm. I don't advise. Fortunately for her, she had a a natural, healthy birth. So you know. After she was exhausted, though, and what did she do? She rested. Um, everybody's built differently. So I can't speak to, I personally know I, at least with this last birth, obviously I couldn't have. I was in the hospital for four days. Um, but every birth, every pregnancy, every woman's experience is different. But regardless, it's still time off that a woman usually has to take that a man doesn't. 
you're fortunate enough to have paternity leave, but like life would have gone on if you didn't have paternity leave. Like, because yes, you would have been tired assisting where you can, but there's a different burden that falls on you than falls on a woman. Yeah. So this took a bit of a turn that I didn't expect. Uh, but that's not your fault because you never, you didn't have a chance to read the the article, the, the, the feature. So it wasn't so much um, that they're trying to have kids immediately. I know she said she wants to wait until after she's done playing. She wouldn't like be pregnant and or he wouldn't be pregnant while still being, wasn't being she, an athlete. She was pregnant while she was... She was two months pregnant, I think, in uh, the last Grand Slam she won, I think, in 2017, mm-hmm. I think. I think it was Austra- no the knew. Australian. No one knew. Until no. after the fact. Right. Um, hers came, I think, the reason why she was giving retiring is because she, um, it seemed as if she wasn't quite sure if she was as committed to it because like her daughter's getting older. Um, she has a, a side business now. They have their own um, investment venture uh, uh, fund that they're, uh, that they're trying to, she's trying to grow. Um, but she, one thing stood out. She said <laughs> her daughter's probably only ever spent one 24 hour period away from her. Like as long as she's been alive. And I think she's like five. So, um, she's a little younger than that. I think the article said she was about five. Really? She looks yeah. so much. Uh, or young, toddler. Yeah, she, <clears throat> she looks toddlerish to me, but so, I guess five. Is. So, uh, yeah. So, if I guess my question is, if if you're not trying, if you know you're not trying to have another kid um, until you're done playing, um, and your your current child is like four or five in four or five range where they start to become a little self-sufficient, independent. Um, you've got a billionaire husband. Does she really have to stop playing? And is it like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious. Like it doesn't seem like her current situation would force her to quit because she's a woman. Like mm-hmm. I would get it if she was like, yo, we got it. We got to grow this family. Like I got you pregnant now. Or the, her daughter was like one or two. Cause it's more, obviously more demanding because mm-hmm. the baby's younger and they need their all over. I want mom. I want mom. I don't care about that. But you know, you could hire help. Right. I know mm-hmm. it's not the same family members could come, could come in. Um, I know that's not the same, but you could still continue to have, uh, an athletic career if you so chose mm-hmm. so i don't know it was just an interesting framing because it didn't seem like to me it didn't seem like that had to be the reason if that makes sense well I th- and i can only speak from my perspective as a mom but i know the you would think that because your kid gets older not the less time you you want to spend with them or the less time you need to spend with them. I think, especially with Solace, she is, you know, school, dance, at one point soccer. She's busier. She's active. And you still want to, I still want to be present. I know for me, I'm very sensitive to quality time and I want my kids to have quality time uh it might be morbid but I I do want them when they think back to like remember the things we did together the time we spent together um one-on-one as a group whatever and the older they get the less opportunity you have for that because they're becoming their own people too so you know you have to fit into their their structure as well so I think as a mom one you you have the criticism of society. I'm sure people have said things about her regarding like, oh, you're putting your career in athleticism. And people come for women like that. Like, oh, you're putting your career above your children. Um, that's unfortunate because, you know, for some, the career is to provide for these children so that they can have opportunities to explore and do things and have adventure. Um, 
But I think just as a mother, you just, you have moments of reckoning where it's just, I want to be present, but I'm tired, but I want to be present. Like I know Solace had, they had done like a mother's day thing at school where they were filling out, like the teacher would ask a question and then they would answer on behalf of their mom or what they'd want. And there was one question that really like stung me where, um, it's like, what do you want for your mom or what do you want your mom to do? And her response was to work less. And that really like, that really stung me. Cause I remember being a kid and you know, if a parishioner called my dad, like he'd pick up the phone. So it was just like a lot of, I, I'm very sensitive to that. So I felt like, darn, everything that I'm trying not to do. And I'm not saying it's to that extent for her, but I do remember those moments. Like, you know, I'm 32 now, but I do remember being eight and, you know, talking to my dad about something and then someone calls and, oh, hold on. And then, you know, it's a two hour conversation and then that moment is gone. So for her at six at the time to already like, and it, it does, it might have nothing to do with in terms of the attention I give to her, but just the fact that she recognizes that I work a lot and she wants me to work less. Um, and we talked about it. Uh, so that could be it too, where she's just like, you know, it takes a lot to be the grand champion. It takes a lot to be the best at what I do, but they're only so you can only be the best at so many things before something has to give and maybe she's just at a point where she doesn't want her role as a mother to give and you know some women are in positions where they are willing to I hate to say sacrifice their kids but you know they they want for themselves and there's nothing wrong with that and some women if you ask TD Jakes he might have a different oh just playing <laughs> and some women like myself, I want for myself. There, there's a career level I'm trying to get to, but I would never sacrifice my kids and the time that I get with them for selfish gains, if that makes sense. Bro, you just on a meeting for like eight straight hours a day. Hmm? You were on a meeting for like eight straight hours a day. Your kids were. I know, but when calling I calling for you, they were my not mommy, calling. mommy. <laughs> <laughs> they were not, and I don't know if you're trying to help the situation or not. But when I'm I get, to call out your when I get gaps, I come downstairs. Even with our nanny, I come downstairs and I'll I'll give her a break, and I'll take the kids from her. I'll take Sonoma from her, and I'll play with Sonoma, and I'll hug on her, and you know we'll walk around, and you know we'll just have a moment because for me that's a big deal. Yeah, I'm stuck behind a computer most of the day. I'm out in the field, but when I can, I make the time, and I try to give them undivided attention. So, you know, maybe that's just her thought. Like, yeah, I could continue being an athlete. I could continue playing. I can also continue being a mom, but maybe the type of mom she wants to be, she can't do both. And that's just an unfortunate reality that sometimes you have to accept. Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of, I can see that, I guess. I guess my, my thought was it's not necessarily a, a woman thing. No, it's just like a parent thing. Right. Like just in a general sense, like I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to usher in this next stage of my life. And I can't do that if I'm still one foot in of this. All I've known for the last 20 or how many years that she's been playing tennis like that used to be my world. But now I want my world to be this, to be consistent of this. And these priorities need to shift to me. It just it, it seems just like a parent making a conscious decision for the family. So I know it just, it just, I don't know. I'm not sitting here trying to like throw shade or, or complain or anything, but it, it struck me as weird because like when I read, cause the, the article kind of leads with, um, there's, there's a lead and then it kind of goes into her saying, you know, I have to step away from the game because I'm a woman, but everything that she went into kind of detailing and explaining her feelings and how she got to that point to me, maybe it's because I'm a guy or whatever, or maybe I just didn't connect with it. It just read as because she's a parent and at a different stage of her life or a different stage of parenthood. And I didn't necessarily see, um, that was because she was a woman. Now this is not to forget or neglect 
a lot of the criticism and unfair criticism that she's received while she's been like the pinnacle of of women's tennis um like the cat suit and then like you know people were constantly talking about her body and if she should be wearing this and blah 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 um and that was because she was a woman and a black woman because nobody nobody really talks about the attitudes of men when they're competing mm-hmm. oh it's, that's 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 the competitiveness that's the fire and if it's women like oh that's that's too much and this attitude and blah 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 you don't need that in the game so um i do think there are aspects of her career where she was singled out because she was mm-hmm. because she was <laughs> because she is um uh, a woman black woman um but as what was laid out in the feature it was just i was just reading i was just like no this is just a parent like really struggling with leaving a sport that they love or you or still love but realizing that they love their family and this new thing with the with the firm the the fund that she's running growing uh more and it's just that struggle like a lot of the the great athletes they always talk about how hard it was for them to like step away Mm -hmm. which is why like in the nba you'll see like some of the greatest players ever at the end of their career they're just like bouncing from team to team because they're just looking for somebody to let them play because they can't not play or they can't not start right like Allen iverson didn't want to come off the bench <clears throat> one of the greatest guards ever probably like top 10 15 guards of all time got to the end of his career and people were like you need to come off the bench he was like nah so i'm not gonna play in philly i'm gonna go play in memphis <laughs> this is like Allen iverson in a, in a memphis jersey i'm like, pretty sure he said he was like never gonna leave new york philly I don't have some play for Philly. Yeah, 76ers. Oh, I'm thinking of, um, what's your boy's name? Out of New York. Lala's dude. No? Yeah. Well, he got traded. Oh, okay. So it wasn't he really traded. his fault. All right, never yeah, he wanted, he wanted to be in New York, but he got traded. Um, yeah. But that's cool. I mean, I, I, I appreciated it because it's, I'm not a big, um, a follower of Serena, so I would watch, you know, when she was on back in the day when I was growing up, um, and I'd kind of read headlines and stuff when her name would pop up, but I never really dug into her her life. So it was good to kind of get a, you know, kind of get a a glance into, you know, her mind and and how she thinks and and her passions and desires. So I appreciate it from that standpoint. You know, it's sad when you associate just certain things with life mm-hmm. as you've seen them as you grow up. Like I never thought Kobe Bryant would retire. Uh, I never thought Vince Carter, my favorite basketball player would retire. Tom Brady is still playing football. Like Tom Brady's been playing football since I was <laughs> like in middle school. Since I was like nine, eight, um, nine. So there's just certain things you just like just associate with like Tom Brady. Just, I just, in my mind, Tom Brady's always going to be playing football. Um, but that's going to come to an end and, it's it's just kind of surreal. Life. Yeah, it's surreal to think that now Serena's not going to be playing tennis anymore. How old is she? 41? Oh. I think in the 40s. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. But that was, that was interesting. Interesting piece. I wanted to talk about it last week, but we didn't have room. There's, there's a lot of other stuff that we that we, we should hit. revisit some of last week's topics. <sighs> like what? Popeyes. What about it? I just still, spicy. I still have more feelings about that whole. Thing. <laughs> I just, Why? I'm upset. It's got, with, not, it's got nothing to do with you. I'm just upset with the New York Times. I'm upset that they published with, it. Yeah, I'm upset. With the Why? Way, the way of which they published it. They just made them. They put it in a. They may, they either they portrayed themselves poorly or the New York Times edited it poorly. I know one of her homegirls was like, "Nah, they did they them just, dirty." They just no. The homegirl was like, "They they did." Her homegirl was straight up like, "They did her dirty." I don't know what intern. Oh wait, you mean a a, a medium a, a a media medium like edited something so that it would be viral or mm-hmm. it would attract clicks or eyes? In 2022, you mean that's what happened? 
They did black women oh, dirty. Oh, man, I'm shocked. They did that black woman dirty. Anyway. What about him? What about the dude? This He's married to her, right? Well, it get it gets worse. Like, did you read the piece where apparently his friend bought the engagement ring? It's, <laughs> I said it was unorthodox. <laughs> So I just que- I question him as a man, and if I mean, he's, he's not- re- if he's really a decision maker here, like apparently she told him that he was gonna move in with her. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with a woman being a decision maker? Because when a woman's a decision maker, then men all of a sudden have a moment where they're like, "You don't make me feel like a man," but you're not making that's, the decisions. That's hyperbolic. That's hyperbolic. That's that's. that's Okay. There's no facts to back that up. Okay. There's not. I mean, you and I have a different kind of relationship, and you ex- you have an expectation for a certain type of relationship or for a man to behave a certain way. I fit somewhere in that expectation. Maybe not all the way inside, but I'm at least, you know, I'm in there somewhat. It's like your big toe. <laughs> so I dip, dip my big toe in there. Um, what do they call it? A Venn diagram. <laughs> so I'm oh. kind of in there, but kind of not. They're all the same. Um, but my people project a lot. Now, I'm not saying you're doing it, but that may be good for them. That may be what they okay. want. Okay. I'm not, and that's fine. It's not my relationship. It's not. It's now. That doesn't mean we can't have some fun with it. <laughs> just, but at the end of the day. I, my issue is still with the New York Times. At the end of the day, these are two adults who have made a decision. And I hope that they are happily married. They, they probably, they probably the happiest couple like ever. And they got some newfound, yeah. some newfound fame. <laughs> Yo, they about, they about to get a reality. They about to drop a clothing line. They better not. I hope not. They'll probably they about to go into a partnership. Like They're a, gonna go into a partnership with Popeyes. They'll get like a mini series. <laughs> they'll be in a commercial. <sighs> anyway. What else? That all there's, you nothing, there's nothing wrong with, with women being decision makers. If that works for the two people in the relationship. What else you got? <laughs> oh, you don't want to touch with it. it was like, I don't have any thoughts. It's, it's, Serena was what I want to talk about. And, it, and it worked because we just happened to be talking about kids. Okay. And I don't This doesn't have to be crazy long because you're going out of town and I got to edit this between tonight and tomorrow to get it ready for Wednesday. So it's, I'm going to be, you going to be tired. It's going to be a, week for everybody like everybody's gonna be tired this weekend i'm probably gonna go work saturday anyway so i'm gonna be dumb tired as the kids say um but did you have anything else i can't think i feel like there was something that you had sent me that we were supposed to yeah why indicated that you might wanted to talk about i won't send you stuff anymore because you don't have you don't have time i'll glance at it but let me see. I feel like you you sent me a tweet. Let's see. <coughs> you got the wrong. You got that. You got that wrong. Maybe. Yeah, girl. It'd be a relief. <laughs> I'm just in this place where I whatever it takes to get me to like calm down. To be you stopped. Want, you don't want that wrong again. Okay, you sent me the Denzel dude. It's, he is amazing, he did, isn't he? Did he did a really good job. He was really good. Um, you sent me those random fishnets, Jessica. <laughs> People don't need to know. They don't need to know all of the intimate details of our of our text thread. Um, the fishnets were nice, though. I can't wait. To, I can't wait for the Amazon man to drop those off. Yep. <laughs> Yo, researchers asked teachers to look at video of free school. Oh yeah, did you see that? I did. You sent it. I did thought. you? Re- but did you read? Did you watch it? I did watch it. It's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Researchers at Yale showed teachers this video clip of four preschool students. Their instructions: look for misbehavior and click when you see it. The study was kind of deceptive. None of the kids in the video actually misbehaved. The researchers were using eye tracking software. What they actually wanted to study was who the teachers were watching. Both black and white teachers spent significantly more time watching the black boy in the video. This study showed that even preschool teachers can treat kids differently based on their race without even realizing it. Look elsewhere in the US school system and you'll see this show up in other ways. 
like at this middle school in Bryan, Texas. They gave students tickets for offenses like disrupting class or using profanity. Black students were four times more likely than white students to receive those tickets. Nationwide, black boys miss way more school due to suspensions than any other group. And this can start a kind of chain reaction. Missing weeks of school due to suspensions makes students much more likely to drop out. Without a diploma, you're much less likely to earn a living wage and much more likely to be incarcerated. All this missing school is helping to drive the highest poverty and incarceration rates in the developed world. So it's worth asking, how'd we get here? Both white and black teachers. Yeah. So this proves that, uh, that black boys, black men, mm-hmm. um, have it pretty bad too. Not that we're in a like a oh, no <laughs> like a pretty speaks. like I'm we're not, not witnesses not today that, at not Target. That, not that we're in competition, but I know there's a lot of stuff as we get older, um, where it's like, oh, black women are treated this way, blah 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 blah, and are fairly and yes, they are, but you know, from the time that we're young, we're treated as potential for trouble, just by being young mm-hmm. male. And black, and it's crazy. People at this point, it's just conditioning, yeah. right? By society, people don't even realize they're doing it. It's not, I don't think those teachers were malicious, and no, and how it was an experiment. And that's when they run people run those experiments because they they don't really know what the true goal of the experiment is, and they're just being observed. They're just being observed, and they're being you know being genuine, and those subconscious things kick in. You see it. That's, that's sad. It's heartbreaking. I feel bad. Yeah. It's part of why I am relieved to not have sons. And I, you kind of get it, right? Like, I couldn't do anything growing up. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just couldn't do nothing growing up. And now I know why. Because mm-hmm. my mom was scared. If I, it all it takes is something, it's not even me, somebody I'm with to say the wrong thing, mm-hmm. make a wrong and move, make a bad decision, and I get lumped in. I'll tell you, I, uh, I was a, I was in elementary school, <clears throat> and um, I don't know if I, I think I was in fifth grade. Fifth grade was a, was a, a weird year for me. I was um, how old are you when you're in fifth grade? You're like uh, 11, 12? Mm-hmm. Kind of, you're not you're not a teenager, you're like but you're you're like between you're like nine ten and, and thirteen. So you're kind of um, and I probably acted out the most. I've ever acted out in fifth grade. And I don't know what it was. It could have been the people I was hanging around with. Uh, it could have just been natural, you know, um, adolescent type stuff. So there are these kids in our class. Uh, I remember I remember their names exactly, which is weird. So I think altogether there were five of us and there was a set of twin brothers. And we would just, you know, we would kind of <laughs> act up. And we even had this, and I told this story uh, last season, it's but just the gang. this is part of it, but it was this group of guys. So we, we were all into wrestling. We had all these wrestling games where you could create players. And so we created like a little roster. And of course, our, our fifth grade teacher who was, who was a clown, um, he got a hold of the list somehow. I told some, somebody had it. He was asking for it. I was like, nah, don't give it to him. <laughs> like, don't give it to him. Cause I knew what was going to happen. And he was like, fine. So we gave it to him. And then like a week later, yeah, we got, we got pulled into the guidance counselor's office. Um, I don't want to tell the story because it's, it's our last season, but they were like, tell me about these names. And we were like, well, it's not a gang. And they're like, oh, we, we didn't say it was a gang. We weren't saying that you're in a gang. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. So I think this is after all that. Um, I'm in the bathroom, right? I just happen to be in the bathroom. Totally innocent, right? Doing what I got to do. I'm peeing. And there's this kid who um, had some sort of disability. I, I don't know if it was mental or, or what, but he was getting picked on. So I was in there and there was a bunch of kids. I don't think all the kids in there were black, but majority of them. So the kid goes out and he tells, he tells the teacher. And so this white dude, cause this, this, this white teacher comes in. Um, I can't remember his name, but, um, he comes in and he brings us all out of the bathroom and he lines us up. 
again, I'm just in there. <laughs> I'm literally in there just relieving myself. And so I get, I, I'm in there with the crowd and a couple of, couple of the kids who were in my class. So the teacher lines up and he's like, you all need to apologize. And I was like, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> like I was in their pain and he was like, okay, you step to the side because I didn't, I didn't apologize. And everybody, of course, everybody else apologized. Um, and he tried to get me in trouble. He tried to say I was in trouble and try to push for like some sort of, uh, some sort of disciplinary action because I was, I was seen as being rebellious because I said I was not a part of this. I didn't do anything. And I wasn't disrespectful. I just said, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything. And I got pulled aside and I got disciplined because I didn't go along with, you know, whatever his narrative was. And I went and told my teacher, of course, like I said, he was a clown, so I couldn't rely on him. So I went home. This is probably airing dirty laundry for my family. So I'll, I'll edit it. But I ultimately um, ended up going to my mom um, because my dad and I had a conversation and we didn't didn't quite see eye to eye. So I told my mom about it. And of course, <laughs> everybody's used to sweet doors. Uh, you know, grandma of four grandkids or five grandkids. But um, <laughs> Doris is crazy. <laughs> like you don't mess, you don't mess with Doris, and you especially don't mess with Doris as kids. So I told mom, and she was like, she's like, wait, what? Because my parents always told me, you speak up for yourself, and you always tell the truth. And so I'm not gonna say, don't just say you, okay, I did something if you didn't actually do it. They both, they both taught me that, which is why I was so confused when my dad and I had a conversation because, like I said, we didn't, it didn't go the way I thought it would go. So. I told mom and we, we go down there, right? Like we roll down to school. My mom sets up a conference and um, we're in there with our vice, with our assistant principal who was worthless, they but usually are. Huh? They, <laughs> they usually are worthless. So she, she tried to mediate the situation. Um, and the dude walked in and I guess he, I guess he was caught off guard cause he thought like whatever he said to me and whatever was the end of it. And I walk in and mom's is in there. And so he recounted, his, his, mem his memory of what happened. And so my mom turned to me after he said it. And she was like, is this true? And he got so offended. He was like, was like, ma'am, I told you what happened and you turned and you asked this child. <laughs> and my mom was like, yeah, I do. Cause that's my son. And, and again, like I told you, she said, I, we've taught him to always tell the truth. And I'm asking him if this is what happened dude tried to go off like he tried to intimidate her he tried to like stand up and try to walk out mom sat there the whole time she was cool she was calm she was she was chilling although in her mind i know she was like i wish him <laughs> i wish his mother like just give me a reason give me a reason and so you know obviously nothing happened to me um but i think about how many kids don't have mm -hmm. a doris at home right how many kids have maybe wouldn't have been uh wouldn't have had the the instruction at home to have the courage to say hey i didn't do this mm -hmm. right um and you know my family was pretty pretty well known in the school so i think we i probably even before she came in there i probably got some preferential treatment probably got the benefit of the doubt but how many black boys who would have found themselves in a situation wouldn't have, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's just unfair because I was black, because I blended in with the group who was picking on this kid. I I, I was almost disciplined for it. I, it was almost I was almost, you know, got detention or suspension or or whatever, just for being there. Mm -hmm. Just just being just just for peeing. Everybody pees. Wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> I was peeing in the wrong bathroom at the wrong wrong urinal, wrong bathroom, wrong time. So it's, um, of course, you know, black people, black boys, black girl, everybody's got their, got their stories, um, when they were, you know, discriminate, not, <coughs> or they were stereotyped, but yeah, the video that, that kind of brought that back for me. And I'm just like, and then of course I got my, my story of being in the mall when I was in college, mm -hmm. but Stuff, man. You're right. I, I'm, I'm glad we don't have to raise uh, sons, but hopefully, um, you know, it gets better for those out there mm -hmm. who do have to I, have I to definitely, raise sons. 
I hate to have to say that I sympathize um, for parents of, of black sons, but I do. I, that's something I'll never experience. I'll never know. I, I have three amazing daughters. And I think as a black woman, at times it is easier to navigate this predominantly, I don't want to say predominantly white world because I feel like minorities have the majority in population, but you know, oh, in America, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say. Sure. So, you know, I, I know my experience. Well, I mean, but you look at all the, the powerful institutions and they're still yeah. so majority white. I, in my experience as a, as a black woman, yeah, I've had, you know, issues getting certain jobs, advancing in certain career um, opportunities. But for the most part, Eternal. I, I speak most, if you don't see my face, most people think I'm white. I've gotten jobs because I've done phone <laughs> interviews and then I show up and everybody else who got hired is white and uh, it's me, the black girl. So um, I know how to navigate a white dominated world as a black woman. So I know how to teach that to young girls. It's unfortunate, but yeah, I know how to essentially, you know, the when you code switch, I know how to teach them the code switch of, you know, this is how you are. You know, I, I always fear if like <laughs> somebody from work sees this podcast, because I'd speak not completely different, but I'm, I'm, I'm extremely relaxed here switch. as opposed to, yeah, how I talk at work, but it's just instinctive, right? Yeah. It's like we were taught growing up. It's how you speak when mm-hmm. you're, how you present yourself, how yeah, you, when you're out there in the world. And it's a burden. It is, it's a burden that, Unless you live it, you don't know how burdensome yeah. it is. How having to carry yourself a certain way so that you're not judged is perceived rather than just being free. Like, I even just when I talk to a white coworker and a black coworker, like my ability to say sis to one <laughs> and then like, oh, hey, sweetheart to another, like it's just, it, it's a different. Yeah conversation like when you know one coworker will say girl and i just already know like it's just it and i'm fresh in it but i've already there's just a defaulted relation so i know how to navigate that for a black female um as a black female i wouldn't know i mean i would figure it out as a mother to a black male but there was always a little bit of relief when with each kid it was like it's a girl it's a girl. It's a girl. So um, I don't want any more kids. So you you guys can seriously stop asking um, if I'm trying for a boy. I'm not. Uh, I'm good. I'm like I'm good. Good. So but annoying. It's it, it's it's a lot to navigate, and there are amazing little black boys with so much potential to do amazing things in this world, and it breaks my heart that there's always going to be a group of people who see them as a target, see them as a threat. And one wrong move, one, you know, if you had waited five minutes to go to the bathroom, if you had gone to a different bathroom, you wouldn't have that memory in in your mind. You wouldn't have that experience. So, you know, things like this happen to everyone. There are things that happen to everyone that can, you know, I feel like the word trauma is overused, but can traumatize. but for people of color, it's it's completely different, and you yeah. know, it's it's honestly luck of the draw. Yeah, yeah. I you know I I I kind of forgot all about that. Like I said, until I watched the video, and then it just came came flooding back. I remember being so so. But I think as a kid, you uh you know when like hey man this isn't right mm-hmm. like this is this is wrong because this because this goes smart. this kids goes know. against everything i've been told like you always tell the truth mm-hmm. and you know usually you're you turn out okay and i wasn't i think because i wasn't given the opportunity to like truly defend myself to tell my side of the story what had happened i was automatically labeled as guilty mm-hmm. because i was there and I was with all the other kids. Uh, I was just guilty, right? And I remember um, when I got home. You know, I, I spoke to my dad, and then 
and then I talked to my mom and I remember after I, I talked to my mom, just getting like really upset about it. And I don't know if it was because I saw her reaction, uh, which, you know, always gets, can always <coughs> like you and, and the girls and my mom, if when I see y'all get, you know, emotional, it talk about triggering. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm getting emotional. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I was going to react because my mom's upset. But then I think about why she's upset. And even at, at 9, 10, 11, however old I was, like I, I could somewhat understand uh, loosely, you know, uh, the concept of, of being stereotyped and how unfair it was. Um, and I just remember being so upset about it. And obviously as I got older, the more, when I think back on it, I get upset. And I get, I get really, really upset. But, um, you know, I did, did what I was supposed to do, right? You know, I said I didn't do anything. I wasn't demonstrative. I wasn't disrespectful. Um, I waited till I got home. I didn't go tear. I didn't start throwing stuff and tear stuff up. I told my parents and then, you know, it got resolved. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough being a black man in America, black boy in America, black kid in America. But <clears throat> so, any other uh, tangents you want to <laughs> spark? Anything else you want to pull up out of our out of our text message history? No, put the phone, put the phone down. No. So uh, we're at an hour and ten. So another reckless stuff you sent my. So way. we're oh art. Our thread is usually it's me sending something silly yeah, and then Jessica just, just ignoring it. Ignore Either ignore it or her she'll just say no. I'm like, dang girl, you're not even gonna you're not even gonna entertain me? My foolishness? It's oh, crazy. This guy made a TikTok saying his niece called an aquarium a water zoo. So I tweet I responded to I that saw thread. That. Yeah. That people did numbers. Did it? Did it butt it burps? did numbers. <laughs> I was pulled in these conversations. I was like, why? Yeah. I love it when Twitter works that way, where it's just like genuine fun. Just, Usually yeah. when it's around kids, um, as opposed to like a fight video or something about Trump or Yeah, I got 14 racism. retweets. It's not numbers. Four, no, I mean, <laughs> no, I have 390 not, likes. That's not, I mean, and okay. And I have like a whole thread of just like people Okay, okay, the, okay the three, I'm glad you brought that in. You just like 14 retweets. I'm like, it's not. 14 retweets. I don't that's, really get that's, retweeted that's unless not, I'm like on The View. That's not numbers. And was, Megan's gone, so The View just is it the same. Little, ba- little baby numbers. Uh, 390 likes. Little baby numbers. I had a lot of And you know those me- and those memes that you be criticizing me for and those gifts. Those do numbers when I post them. I have one get. I have one get like other one, people's faces. I have one get like one point five likes, one point five thousand likes. I got thirty one thousand impressions. Ooh, you know an impression is just it showing up on somebody's screen. That's right? enough for me. Sixty nine profile visits. How many follows? That's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not. When that's it's hard forward. to. It's hard to convert, baby. But I'm not a consistent tweeter. Like I, I'm a sporadic tweeter. Sure. Like offend me, I'll tweet. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you got more followers. You get you quadruple as many followers as I do. You only got like 30, 40. I and don't like, even know where all those followers came from. And I feel some like of them from college. Seventy percent of them are just like family members. So like, I have no. Oh, no. your family members are on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got like two family members on Twitter. Mark Lamont. Uh, I think Donald actually follows me, but he doesn't tweet. He just uh, consumes. Yeah, I think uh, most of my, I, a lot of my followers are from college. Yeah. But I only interact with like Matt, Allen, Lorenzo, Q, uh, Boy K. Um, I have a very small, small circle of people I interact with. Um, but back in college, you know, your boy was on it. I had like a thousand followers adjust for inflation. <laughs> I had probably had like 10,000 followers. Your boy was on it back in the I day. Need to but delete. I tweeted like every moment of my life. I need to delete my Twitter. Or I need to like go back and delete old tweets. Yeah. No, well. I, I mean, if I become a person yeah, you, of you, more substance. You strike me as somebody who like, if you ever got popular, you'd be like so afraid of public backlash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. like. But I would get it. I would get you it. You would. And you would like buckle. You fold like a bed sheet First every time. You would. Because we posted one Facebook 
we boosted but one they Facebook were just post. Being so mean. So they were me. just being people. That's what that's how people it's are. Like, I've, I've never been like this to you. I don't understand why you have to be like this. <laughs> That's what you get for being mean to me all these years. How does like, it feel? I'm literally minding my own Because these people, business. these when you boost a post, these people don't know you. Because people who know you, when they see you post something that they probably don't agree with, they're willing to let it slide because they know you. Okay. These people, they ain't got nothing invested in you. They owe you nothing. She doesn't even know where a gander is. Yeah, they say you don't know. You don't I was know, about to be like, you don't first nothing. of all, mother. You don't know nothing. About to meet these hands. Yeah, right. You ain't, you ain't gonna scrap. Who's sitting in your mama's basement? So yeah, come you, for me. you 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 fold like a bed sheet. I me. I just don't like being because I enjoy trolling and I enjoy like just going back and forth with people because I've gotten to the point where I accept that just nothing. I mean, you may catch that one person who's liable to roll up on you and like spray your house with bullets, but most people aren't gonna run into that person. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I don't. I wouldn't mind. I'd enjoy it. Because I tell you, I'm taking that Kardashian mentality, baby. All engagement is good engagement. No, that's true. No such thing as bad engagement. Um, Yeah, no more topics tonight. So we can get this edited. We get it up Wednesday. Um, I got to make some calls. Really messages. Uh, and get our guest schedule mapped out now that uh, Melissa's back from, uh, excuse me, Missy's back. I'm trying to be better. Now that Missy's back from better about respecting her people. trip. Her. <laughs> Work our way up to people. But um yeah, and she's back. I know she we're supposed to have her on and then I got my, my friend. And then uh we got some people to have on. So we gotta get that mapped out. Um but yeah. Appreciate y'all. YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe, like Facebook, we on there. Instagram, follow us. Interact with us. Comment. Just don't be mean to Jessica if you don't agree with something she says because she can't. She can't take it. I can it. handle it just fine. She can't take I've it. I've had people say some. I've had family say horrible things to me, so I can. This is true. Yeah. So you always say you're not full <laughs> like a bed sheet. I've dealt with some. Them stuff. Africans different. They are. They're mean. Africans are a different kind of mean. Way different. But that's another episode for another day. You want to take us out? Speaking of Africans, happy birthday, belated by one day, to one of my favorite Africans, my dearest cousin Loretta. I love you, my first friend. Um, but no doubt. Subscribe on YouTube. I already did that. Listen to us. <laughs> I, I did all this. Share with a friend. I, I did all this. Thank you for your ears, for your listen. We appreciate you for spending this hour and some odd minutes with rushed vibes that's it yeah we out we'll see y'all next week peace yeah. going through some growing pains yeah nothing but some growing pains yeah hey hey i done came way too far can stop me now i done came way too far can stop me now i done came way too far can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now, can stop me now